Welcome to another exciting DAG The Aviator update. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hi folks and welcome. So what you're looking at here is a demonstrator I have created that's going to demonstrate the voltage drop you can get when you start using servos aggressively. The reason I'm doing this is I kind of was a voyeur watching a massive meltdown on Facebook about a bunch of people telling each other how to wire up servos and receivers. And quite honestly, they were so far off base in my opinion, I decided to make this. So when you look at my receiver here, you're going to see a red and black wire uh, on toward the top of it from the way the picture is situated and that's the battery coming into my receiver on the bottom here is a white and black well that's the data or the signal that's going out to the servos so what i've done here this demonstrator was was separated the positive and negative and the data signal now i am using s bus which means i only need that black and white wire to get signal to all of my servos then i'm picking up the black and red wire off a separate battery so i have two batteries one battery for my receiver and one battery that powers up all my servos and the reason i'm doing this is i want to show to you how much the voltage can drop when you really start to hammer servos so when you look at this right here um, the springs are to put a simulated load on the servo only when the servo moves off center just kind of like when you're flying in some of the big 3d airplanes when you really are thrashing them around you're putting a lot of force on it. So what I want you to watch now as I start this video up is uh, on the left-hand side is the receiver voltage. On the right-hand side of that little block is the uh, voltage for the servos. And watch how much the voltage fluctuates. And when I start hammering it here in a minute, I'll get down to like 3.6 volts. And this is a 4.8 volt nominal battery. Now look, if you're running BEC or you're running a separate battery through a voltage regulator, you probably don't have to worry about this. But this meltdown on Facebook was talking about the 4.8 uh, volt flight packs or the receiver packs that we used to use in our standard trainers or that came with standard you know, servos. And the thing is, is that you're okay if you're going to run three or four servos, like a servo for a throttle and one for aileron, one for a rudder and one for... Um, the elevator but when you're doing a 3d plane where you might have as many as 12 servos i really want you to start rethinking what you're doing okay um and if you look at this video right now you'll see how much that voltage is just going all over the place on what the servos are drawing voltage wise so I always try to make these videos as educational as, as possible, folks. I don't try to throw people under the bus. I don't try to put people down. I don't try to go to the negative. But I've seen two planes crash in the last five years that I know in my heart was because they had a about a quarter-scale airplane, and they had probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably had seven servos and then an eighth on the throttle. And the plane just locked up in the air and crashed. Now, what I'm going to do with this, this demonstrator down the road is I'm going to use different receivers on this. And some of them are going to go directly to the servos. They won't use SBUS. They'll use the battery directly to the receiver like we would set up most of our systems. And I'm going to try to get these receivers to brown out or black out and see at what voltage they're dropping out. And then to see how long they take to get the signal locked back in with the receiver, I mean the transmitter. Now, I'm only doing Futaba because that's all I fly. I'm not going to do any JR or um, any Spectrum or anything else out there. But I, I just want to plant the seed in your head that if you're building an airplane of any size and you're going to uh, have more than four or five servos, more than like a trainer would have, um, to really consider how you're going to power the system. Now, look, if you've got an ARF that's already taken care of through the BEC, if you've got a voltage regulator like I always use from Castle, um, you're not going to have to be concerned with this. Even though on my MSL2, my 188-inch airplane, folks, that airplane has a battery for the brakes because I have, I have brakes on it, and that battery is there because I'm stalling those brake servos all the time. So I, I do not run the brakes off the receiver battery, okay? Um, the Elerons elevator and rudder on that is all S-Bus. It runs off its own battery, and the uh, receiver has two batteries. So I have four batteries that I call my flight packs. I'm, I'm sorry, my radio packs. 
Um, I use 10 S2P for the motor, um, which I call my flight pack. But just look at the voltage drop to 3.65 over there when I just took all those servos. Now, none of these servos are stalling, folks. These servos are going their full travel. Um, the springs are not stalling them out. But they're, they're putting quite a bit of load on it. And, you know, when you get down to, uh, you know, 3.6 volts, I want to know if that would cause one of my receivers to actually brown out. Now, another thing I want you to think about is these are two fully charged batteries. Okay. If you've flown 10 or 12 flights in a day or four or five flights in a day and your voltage is already starting to get down on your receiver pack and you go up and do a Lumsha Vok or you start doing a Harrier or you're doing a rolling uh, 360 and you're really hammering those servos, are you pulling your voltage down? Okay. So look, everybody, I'm only creating this for food for thought. That's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to put some stuff out there so as you're building your own airplane and you're getting ready to put the, put the receiver in and hook up all your servos and you're going to put a battery on it you start to figure out you know how much am i really hammering you know that battery and what's even crazier folks when i do testing in the future i'm going to take my uh oh my thermal heat gun thing i mean my thermal gun where i can measure temperature and believe it or not that 4.8 volt battery there goes up about 12 degrees when I start hammering all this stuff. So it's it's really amazing what we're doing to our radio systems out there, folks. So look, thanks for watching this. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time. And uh, be great to each other. And as I always love to say, rock on, everybody, and have an awesome day.